Go. We're to the point of the final mattress build up. I've left the piece open so that you can see the way the uh, battens are lashed to the um, to the spring deck and the um, and the hair pod. I've left it also open to where you can see a very thin layer of horsehair has been laid into the impression or the depression in the pod so that we can bring this up to level. If you back up just a little bit I can show how it's leveled off as the linen is stretched over and the linen is comprising the, um, the internal ticking before the show cover is placed on. As it pulls down to the frame this hair will flatten out whereas almost the elevation is almost the same as the frame level. I'll go ahead and hand cart out a very thin amount of horsehair. See, it's just, just a. When it's compressed, it will be less than a quarter inch thick. This is a, this is horsehair that's been washed, and and has been subjected to heat, a heating process that causes it to curl into tight ringlets. It's very soft, but still springy. I'm not so fond of it using for edge rolls because it's, it doesn't really want to pack tightly for hard edge rolls, you need longer strands for that purpose. And I've also filled what little bits are left of the of this uh, um, of this what is it valley gul gully gulch um, that's next to the tacking margin. Now, because I want this to stay very thin, rather than using a traditional woolen or cotton batting, I'm using a 100% quilter's cotton and doubling it over in thickness. And rather than having you watch the process of, of hand stitching the top and bottom portion of the batting, I'm just going to lay it in up against my seam. And I'll come back later, open this back up, and I'll just set in a light running stitch across to the top and the bottom to where it can't migrate. And um, let me go ahead and cut this. I'll just cut some excess off of this along the edge of the tacking margin <coughs> just to get the excess out. I'll resolve this a bit later when I open it back up. And in a moment you'll be able to see how it will play out once the linen has been stretched over. You can see the batten that I have stitched into the piece. It's going to pull over. Now that same bat batten has been placed along this seam line and along this seam line, which creates a hinge of sorts. So it's stitched into the frame and allows the piece to move without uh, causing the stuffing underneath it to migrate or to bunch up. Okay this over. You see I've marked my centers with chalk so I know exactly where it's to live and I have made my stitch exactly in the position. This, this membrane has been stitched to the piece exactly in the position where the piece hinges. So I will come down with skewers Pull it tightly. Won't take long. I'll make this quick. I know we don't have a great deal of time. But 
least you can see what it looked like once the stitching is in. I like these skewers, they allow a lot of leeway. They don't bend easily. And we're almost there. And three or four more, and we can open it and you can see what that midsection, what I'm calling the lumbar, will look like when it's properly positioned. There we go. Now, the irregularities in this seam line will resolve once I hand stitch the, um, the batten to the, um, to the foundation. But I will flex it. You can see that the stuffing stays in place. It will allow this piece to pivot. It will allow it to pivot in the 